Sectioning Specimens Part 2, <clears throat> preparing the block for sectioning. You want to make sure that the specimen is in the specimen holder and that it is secure. You want to make sure that the blade holder here is inside, is in the uh, clamps on the microtome and that that is secure. Um, feel free to use any tools that are in the lab to secure this particular bolt right here and leave the blade holder loose in the tray, that is don't lock it in place. Make sure that the wheel is also loose in the tray. Now what you're going to do is you're going to roll the specimen down to where the blade meets the block just below the visible portion of the specimen. And what you're going to do is push the blade into that portion of the block to mark where the blade meets the specimen block. Then you'll roll the specimen further down and do the same at the top. These two lines have got to be parallel to one another with respect to the blade itself. It's absolute necessity. Now, remove the blade so you don't cut yourself and taking a uh, razor knife locking the specimen block in place, go ahead and trim the block along those preset lines that you just marked on the specimen block. These, of course, need to be as parallel as you can get them, so do take your time to shave away whatever paraffin you need to to make the ends of the block that hold the specimen absolutely parallel to each other with respect to the blade itself. The specimen block may not be mounted in such a way that it appears the parallel cuts are parallel relative to the blade. Do not be fooled. Let the blade tell you where to cut and then cut exactly there. Make sure you trim away enough of the paraffin around the specimen that those lines will remain parallel throughout the depth of the paraffin that holds the specimen. Do not want to get to the last couple sections and have built up paraffin that is at an odd angle ruining those last couple sections. Again, take your time and make sure that this is trimmed absolutely parallel to one another. And once you've got that, you can actually trim the block on the sides of the specimen to remove any excess paraffin so that your ribbons come out the minimum amount of size they need to be for mounting on slides. Don't leave yourself excess paraffin so that you make extra wide ribbons. That is not a benefit in any way. So trimming off excess paraffin. These two sides can be, should be, more or less parallel to one another, but it is certainly less vital than that the top and the bottom of the block are absolutely parallel. Again, take your time, be careful, make sure not to cut into the specimen clear away any excess paraffin that you have there. Get it out of the track where the blade holder goes. And now you're ready, the specimen locked in place, to return the blade holder to the microtome. Now, you want to push the blade in here you can loosen the specimen to roll it down. You want to push the blade in until it is very nearly in contact with the specimen, though not in contact with the specimen, and lock the blade holder securely in place. Make sure everything is tightened down as much as it can be. This is absolutely essential for proper sectioning. Now, comes the fun part sectioning. So 
So you're going to roll the specimen back and forth across the blade using the handle of the microtome. Let me just adjust this so you can see what I'm working with here. And you want to have in your hand a probe of some kind to catch the ribbon as it comes off the blade. Go ahead and clear any extra paraffin that may have already gotten on the blade off so that it doesn't catch any of the ribbon as it comes off. And then, nice and easily, you don't have to do it quickly, begin to do the sectioning. Obviously, the first part of the ribbon is going to be a little jagged until the planar face is established by the blade. This is absolutely essential that you take your time here and get the ribbon to begin to form properly. See a little bit of curling going on there. That is merely a matter of establishing that parallel action between the top and the bottom of the specimen. Once enough of the paraffin has been cut away, the curling should stop. You can see that it's actually beginning to straighten out. We haven't yet got to the specimen. So what I'm doing is holding the probe here to keep the ribbon from curling back over the blade as it starts. And then as it continues, you can slip the probe around the ribbon to pull it out vertical from the blade. It's a very delicate ribbon. You have to be very careful with it. still sectioning paraffin without specimen at this point. You can see the specimens start to appear as irregular shapes in the paraffin sections as they roll off of the blade. You can verify this by looking at the specimen straight on or from an oblique angle to determine that the specimen is indeed still in the paraffin and you haven't sectioned any of it yet. If this is the case, you can go ahead and get rid of some of this leader ribbon. Just use the razor blade to cut it off. And again, getting the excess paraffin out of your way here will prove a benefit in the long run. Now, we can continue sectioning, again using the probe to ensure that the ribbon doesn't curl back up on itself, and then eventually to ensure that it's coming out away from the blade. This keeps it from sticking to the blade holder, and that of course has problems where the ribbon isn't being fed straight through as it should be. Once you're at this position where the specimen or the ribbon is actually coming off nice and straight, nice regular sections, you can pick up the pace with the microtome a little and now I'm starting to see sections of the specimen coming off in the ribbon. Continue this until you have sectioned through the entire specimen. If you have to stop, that's no worry. Take your time and make sure you're doing things correctly.